ES3 Network. Bring back that beat, D J. Indeed, Indeed. Fox Four <laughs> News. It's <laughs> <laughs> that Sean Rab effect. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where he right. wait twelve minutes before Fox Four and News. <laughs> you think he's still on KKDA? One time with Crime Stoppers, you come out to cut the Crime Stoppers. Yeah, speaking oh. of Sean Rab, let's give a shout out to Lady J, man, who has left K one hundred four after what has it been twenty years? Been twenty, 20 years. years, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What, what 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 happened? She said she was going to explain later, but I don't know what yeah. happened. Yeah. 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 It, it probably mean they wouldn't want to give a get a paper, right? Yeah, probably, it's probably yeah. money. It's probably money. It's the money. It's the money. It's the money. Yeah, after money. twenty years, you know, yeah, twenty you, years should be a no. You gotta no get taken care of. Yeah. And yeah. I'm sure they've been, you know, the rank, the ratings, and and whatnot has been pretty high in that time period. You'd think, oh, you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the ratings haven't went down at all. Yeah, I, I doubt that they have. Uh, big shout out to Tony Williams in the building. Thank you for tuning in. We got Tony Daniel White. We got uh Sam Mitchell. Tony, get me. The one of cover names in, in, in the background. <laughs> I'm not gonna say what go with Tony. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> say it. <laughs> He's yeah. in the building. There's a uh, hey peeps. All right, let's get a let's get a couple of things, a uh, couple of uh, uh, what's what's the word? Uh, Wait a minute, of, hey, uh, something ain't right. Pertinent things, something ain't right. A couple of pertinent things to talk about. First. So, something ain't right, man. Hold on a second. Yeah. Say say, Keisha, you said Keisha in the building. Yes. Hey, trap. Did you hear that part? <laughs> the mic working over there. <laughs> <laughs> put, our, put our names back up right quick, Ben. Let me see how they display it today. Oh, we motherfucker I got a new computer. Huh? I got a new computer, man. Computer crap. Wow, that is sad. Oh gosh. Awkward. We'll go with that. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's been the same. <laughs> Don't look last week's show. Don't look last week. I love it, man. Wow. All right. So, thank you, everybody, for tuning in tonight. Uh, we are reviewing a powerful documentary called Who We Are. And it's uh, the chronicle of race, of racism in America. Uh, it is uh, an amazing documentary to check it out. It's on Netflix. Uh, but I wanted to speak on one thing before we get into the show. Tomorrow we have a very uh, special event. It is the third annual BS3 Network Awards, yeah. and that will be live on our YouTube. So go to if you haven't subscribed already. First of all, what you doing? Because you've been watching this show every week. No doubt. But uh, YouTube.com backslash BS3 Network. Uh, starting at 7 p.m., the third annual BSU Network Awards will be live. Um, a lot of great awards. Um, most of the shows will be in the building, so you can see everybody on one screen at one time. So make sure to tune in to that tomorrow. And uh seemed like, man, it seemed like this week was long. Like, we were on last week, right? It seemed like it was a minute. Yeah. It, it was a pretty long yeah. week. Yeah, throwback week. Throwback Monday. That, that rain, that rain last rain week. Rain does Monday. that, I guess. Yeah, but uh, Wilkes. I saw you <laughs> walking in the rain. Uh, oh, 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 gosh, that video. <laughs> hey, 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 baby, how was he? <laughs> now come in, sir. You miss me. I miss you. you too. I miss you so much. I followed you today. <laughs> You're right. 
Stark, yeah, man. Yeah. That Alicat coat wearing, that's probably shoe wearing Crump that I saw you with. That DVD video. Yeah, I saw you today. Yeah. Without me, without cornflakes, without the milk. In my word, you just a squirrel trying to get a nut. Man. Don't touch that coat. <laughs> get your stuff, get out. Yes. <laughs> right. ah, yes. Classic. How, how you doing tonight, Wilkes? I'm good. Doing all right. Doing all right. Good, good. What, what's she talking about? Tony said this, she, this huh? is huh? Key Man huh? from huh? Huh? What? Yeah, what? What are you talking about? Messy is me. Uh, my big family. I don't know who that. Is. What's up with the Facebook yeah. users, man? They they um, slipping, man. Link. Get the link, man. Click that link so we can see who you are. Uh, Raider Kevin, the building. Thank you for tuning in. What's up, Kev? I see, I see you, Raider Kevin, man. Getting your your, your workout on. Keep doing it, man. Keep doing Kev it. All right, uh, A Trap. How you doing? I'm good, man. You know me, man. Everything's all good. Good, 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 good. good. Nice watch. Uh, Doc, how you doing? <laughs> I'd like to cede my time over to the representative of Chicago and let him speak more about <laughs> this change in titles and names. <laughs> uh, I'm fantastic, man. You know, uh, it's Monday, but you know, I don't have a case of the Mondays whatsoever, you know. Wow. Um, like you AB know. said, uh, business is booming, huh? Yeah, this this was you know we blessed, you know we blessed, so uh, no complaints at all. So you know rain at all bad, especially when it get dumped. I mean, anytime you can make up an entire nine month deficit in one fucking day, right, right, a nine month deficit in one day, that tell you all. They said this is a thousand year rain, not a hundred year event. <laughs> like it. And this and is I a can, thousand year reign. I, I like can believe Noah, it. Noah, had, I mean, it's going to be a whole bunch of kids named Noah in about <laughs> nine months. Man, I can believe it. There was literally like gonna a look like cheetahs and shit. <laughs> 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 yeah. Especially you, when that rain filling in cracks, man. I was yeah. like, wait a minute. There was yeah. a crack here yesterday. The yeah, dirt yeah. has come back together. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean by the nine months. Because while the rain was filling in cracks, yeah, um, some other cracks was getting more farming. Yeah, some bait from my house was <laughs> and some jawbreakers was happening. <laughs> that's the inside joke. We can't do ah. ah. <laughs> yeah, tune in to BS3 after dark and we'll get the jawbreaker. Yeah. Uh, name, name change. K Rap for life. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. No that question. computer ain't so new, is it? <laughs> it is new. It's brand new. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who we are. Uh, this was recommended by Doc. I didn't know what to expect. No, it wasn't me. Yeah, it was you. Nope. No, I, was, I don't oh, think it was me. Oh, that, that was me because it just yeah. hit me. Oh, okay, okay. That it wasn't me. It, yeah. And it was a random. It was a random find because I, I nothing else was on. And yeah, I was, no. just popped up. Because I was, you know, I, I shit. Because I, I ain't been this mad since Roots came out that week when I was in the sixth grade. Then. <laughs> <laughs> don't you look at me. And if y'all, if y'all were back, <laughs> right? Oh, you look at me. <laughs> if y'all were back in our early days, uh, back in the day when we did exterminate all the brutes, this was yeah. this is a a parallel, but like Wilk said, interviewing actual people in those mm -hmm. situations and finding yeah. documentations, yeah. handwritten. Yeah, I was like, wow, like yeah. yeah, yeah. He 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 talked the hell out of this man, as far as oh. I'm concerned. Yeah. PowerPoint now, yeah. yeah. That was like, wow. I had the little, I had the little pointer, the clicker, and everything. He was. It's like, how could you even? I mean, you would have to have conscientious stupidity to try to argue some of these facts mm -hmm. because, yeah. It, it, well, and the wow. way he do it, and the way he did it, man. 
it's in a way that makes your confrontation look super stupid. Like right. the one guy who had the Confederate flag. <laughs> he yeah. looked just like he, he was, he was, I mean, it's like I would never, if I was this cat, man, I'd have joined Black Lives Matter that evening. Right. Right. Because he made you look so he, stupid. He, he looked like he was about no to fire the uh, you know, He was yeah. so calm about it. He just yeah. looked at him like, he really? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Like you don't do you not hear yourself talking right now? Do you not yeah. hear the words coming out of your mouth yeah. literally? They're, they're not used to being challenged in that way, man. And just with challenge right. with just, you know, intelligence and mentality, no emotion. Right. They can't I'm not you, raising you my take voice. The emotion out of it. No, yeah. they lost, man. Oh, yeah. Cuz I'm not yeah, cuz I'm not raising my voice. Yeah. I'm not yelling. They need I'm the not... noise. They need the noise to drown yeah. their stupidity. Yeah. yeah. Right, exactly. he, he he looked like man. I want to. He looked like he wanted. I want to put this flag down, but I. But I can't. I can't do it. He lost. Yeah, he was. He looked like somebody who has been fooled all his life. Is what he, he looked really like. He looked like yeah, somebody he looked, who yeah. fi- just figured out I'm a fucking sheep. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. don't and I, and I don't know how to get out of this. Right. Yep. We yeah. didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Yeah. All right. So initial thoughts, uh, Wilkes. I go to you first. Man, I, I I had to share it immediately with with you guys when I watched it because it was, I mean, the way it was presented in the first ten minutes. I mean, I thought I was already twenty five minutes in, mm-hmm. but when I paused it, it was only nine minutes and forty nine <laughs> seconds. I was yeah. like, wow, this is gonna be heavy. This is gonna be heavy. And it definitely was, but I I mean, I really enjoyed, like I said, how it was presented. I mean, you've got handwritten letters, you find newspaper clippings. I mean, you've got video, I mean, everything to line up what he's saying and backing it up and didn't feel like there was much, like too many fillers. I mean, it felt like everything that like, Hey, I'm bringing this to you straight as possible. I'm not trying to hold back. Just the facts, man. Yeah. If you're uncomfortable, good. I'm glad you're uncomfortable. Because this is what is going on. Yeah. I'm not trying to make it any more than what it is or any less. So. Let, let me ask Atrap real quick. Did you know this cat before? Or any of y'all know this cat before? I Jeffrey never Robinson? Heard. I never is heard. He, is he a historian? Is he a civil rights activist? What is his deal? Yeah. Actually, he's an attorney. Uh, um, he, yeah, well, I'll just go right into my initial thoughts. Yeah, I, I was familiar with this guy. You know, uh, Wilkes, Wilkes probably didn't realize that he's heard him on Joe Madison and Ken Round. Mm, probably so. Yeah. I think that about yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. So uh this I was I was uh I saw this about a month ago, but about a month before Will saw it. And it was just a situation to where as people are being introduced to the truth and people are very uncomfortable with the truth. Yeah. It's just like when you're talking to a, a traditional citizen. When you speak to a traditional citizen and you introduce them to their flaws, people automatically become defensive. And as you guys stated. Right. This yeah. dude was willing to look like a damn fool just to stand up for what he believed in. And and that's what it is. Can you package and sell me what you believe? Nah. What you feel? Yeah. Nah. Let's just yeah. go with the truth and the facts. And that's why mm-hmm. things like CRT, critical race theory, or, or cultural responsive teaching, that's what I call it, culturally responsive teaching. And when you are looking at these things and you see a man stand in front of another man and present him with nothing but facts, nothing right. but actual facts, and you can affirm those facts, but yet and still you are so married to your opinion that you're yeah. willing to look like the biggest damn fool in the history mm-hmm. of the earth, yeah. knowing that this man is recording, knowing at some point the world will see you, it's a shameful situation. And that this basically shows you, it, it, it gave, gave you, this was a microcosm of the issues of <laughs> the United States of America today. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Doc. Um, yeah, man, Jeffrey Robinson, that dude, man, just because his demeanor and his delivery has become one of my favorite teachers, period, right? You know, uh, and 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 I like the way he started in this auditorium that he's given, you know, this lecture to or this presentation to. He immediately disarms them by saying, you know, slavery is not our fault. We didn't do it, but it's our shared history and shared responsibility, you know, so you immediately disarm them. I'm not coming after you to try to blame you for anything, right. but at the end of the day that you're, you, we're still culpable and responsible for the aftermath, so to speak. Wow. So I, I like the way he started it, man. And, 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 
you know, he's teaching them and he's even, you know, being a bit sarcastic whenever he talks about certain elements and aspects yeah. of it to where he delivers it kind of dry, but the audience right. has to laugh at it. And like, yeah, you know, yeah. that's, he makes it make it look so stupid and so elementary, you know, yeah. that it kind of makes you feel as a society, why the hell are we falling for this shit for so long? You know, right. if you're on the other side, so to speak, you know? Right. So, um, so I would really be interested in, and what we need to do one episode, man, is maybe get some 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 uh, 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 lighter skinned family members that ain't skin folk to watch <laughs> this yeah. and see, get they inter- they get they interpretation right. of it, man. See what oh, they yeah. think about it, really. Right. You know, no, absolutely, um, absolutely. Because, like I said, I, I, this dude's delivery was just fantastic to me. So um, very disarmed. You know who he put me in the mind of being Clinton. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's your uncle's first name, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Clem Kelly. Uh, yeah, that's who he put me in the mind of, man. Uh, right. And he happens to be an attorney, yeah, too, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah, I, I can't yeah, sit just listen to your uncle talk about anything, oh, man. Yeah, yeah, he was. We have to get him on. We have to get yeah, him on. no doubt. Yeah, we yeah, should have got him on on something public. like this. Yeah, uh, I saw this very good. Yeah, his delivery was. It wasn't, I'm not coming at you hard. I'm just going to give you the facts. And yeah. you, you're not going to have no choice but to step back and say, wow, and and yeah. reason with yourself in your own mind. That, that, that was his delivery. It wasn't, I'm not standing on the corner throwing books at you, and I'm not standing right. on the corner preaching to you. Yeah. I'm just going to give you the facts, and, and, it, and yeah. it is what it is. It's up to yeah. you to right. then deal with it. I think that, that, was, that was like his delivery. And it was just the way it was just broken down. Um, each thing he went into, it was it was broken down in such a small amount of time. That amazed me. How he touched, yeah. he went into so many different situations and right. efficient occurrences that happened. He was, he was efficient. It was man. less than two hours. This was what hour and hour fifty four. I believe. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, he definitely, I mean, the way he broke down the amendments and the way he broke down speeches and document like short clips and backing it up and following it up with experiences and, you know, and and how he kept saying this was 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. This wasn't 120 years ago. Like some of the things that were happening, most of us. Or that age, not yeah. that age, or yeah, around past yeah. that age, you know. Yeah, me, like, and, me and Adra was at the house playing with Lincoln Logs, motherfucker. This is not, you know, <laughs> right? You, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, man. But it's just one of those situations to where, as I just think, people in America from from all uh, communities, um, they refuse to actually do research. They refuse to actually look into things of this nature. We're satisfied by being pacified by the news media. Whatever the TV says, that's what we go by. The days of Walter Cronkite and, and, and Ted Koppel and those guys are over because oh, they were journalists. Yeah. Don Lemon is not a journalist. Um, most of these people that we see on television, they are not journalists. They are entertainment. They're inter- info yeah, yeah. entertainment. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So it's a shock and amazing. And the information is given to them. They're not right. going out and researching this stuff. Right. Exactly. Somebody, there's a department. That that person gives them the information and they say it on there. Yeah, if you can read, you can do that job. Yeah, right. yeah. Which is why they put some bullshit on teleprompter sometimes just to see if your ass will read. It. <laughs> I'm saying, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> That's true. That's true. For this shock and awe, man. Uh, Ray to Kev, this is uh Netflix, man. Pass it by yeah. in the building. Thanks for tuning yeah, in. Good good network. Appreciate you. All right, so yes, Jeffrey Robinson, uh, 40 years as a lawyer. And also, I like the aspect that he put his family into this. The part where he said, uh, I think you were saying, I'm lucky, or this was luck. Yeah, this is what it looked like. Luck, that, luck looks like. Luck looks like. That was, I thought that was powerful. Yeah, um, man. So the way he intertwined his own life. <laughs> Into it. Alfred ass is late, ain't it? What is wrong with him? He got a so <laughs> ankle today. You come, in when, you come in when it's most comfortable, you know. I see. You don't want to interrupt be a lush gig, Kev. He get the he like the real Alpha because Alpha used to talk shit to Batman, so I guess he kind of like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, nah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He know, he know it. Um, so this is not a penny word. <laughs> yeah, Smith. Okay, <laughs> penny word. <laughs> <laughs> 
And like you said, Wilkes, right off the bat, he, he's in Charleston, South Carolina, with the guy with the with the flag, and then it, he immediately went to ninety five percent was produced by slave labor, and he talked about right. slaves. And so, right. and, and the comment when he said, "Yeah, we that were like family," he was like, "Oh, uh, I got a stomachache. I'm not feeling too well. I need to." Yeah, I mean, because yeah. he was like, "Oh, they, you know, because they weren't." sure of what they were going to face so they chose to stay yeah they, you know i'm like man yeah you, this you is where know. this is a cat who the clear case of i've heard in, in the narrative yeah. i've heard a few lines i can glom on to and repeat right and i'm gonna hold on to those two or three lines yeah, and anytime right. i'm challenged i gotta throw this out you right know because the shit sound good yeah uh, he yeah, was coach yeah, it's just it's just sad commentary, man. And this is why, like, like cultural response of teaching is is being combated because at that point you have to face your ills. You have to right. face the things that you've done to a, to a nation of people. Meaning the first the first nation, the first documented nation, the people are called Indians, the Native American or the Indigenous, you know that North American people. Then you had to deal with the people who were brought here in chains. And at that point, you owe. And when you owe, you don't want to pay because then you have to admit right. you're wrong. When you owe, yeah. you admit you're wrong. When you admit you're wrong, you're forced to pay restitution. Pay pay restitution, you bankrupt the country. You in right. this criminal right. settler enterprise saw the United States of America at that point, and they know it. And just what yeah. kind of piggybacking off what HRAP just said, when that when he was talking to that gentleman with the flag, that guy was talking as if he knows that he doesn't have most, much of a culture to speak of. Your culture was pretty much tyrannic. So it's like you you pretty much had these ancestors that established these places by force. Then it's like how would like he said, how are you going to get that who who was going to do the work if they were treated like family? If I owned you, would, would you appreciate me own, uh, owning you? You're not going to do the work because you don't want to do the work. Right. Right. That's how we got, you know, it's like that's how the nation got to that point. You don't want to pick your own money. You don't want to pick your own hard work. And like mm -hmm. he said, when you when you hold a, a, a ball of cotton in yeah, your hand, and he's talking about billions of pounds. Wow. Yeah. Like, I mean, no I way. Hey, and I got news for you, man. I got my family. My mama picked cotton, okay, yeah. period. And right. when she used to tell me well, what they had to do before they could go, how much they had to do before they could go, right. even at an early age, I was thinking to myself, yeah, that'll take forever trying to get some cotton. That shit don't weigh nothing. Exactly. And my grandmother, yeah. we, we had a relative that taught my grandmother as a kid how to pick cotton. But at that point, of course, it was sharecropping at that point. But still, mm -hmm. it was to the point you were learning how to pick. And that stuff was rough. Yeah. It was not oh, yeah. all nice. Your fingers up. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't all nice and pretty. Yeah. I was like, and we actually, and I had, we had a, a piece of cotton on the counter years ago. But that, yeah. was, that was pulled from a field and it had all kinds of stems and stickers on it and yeah. everything but and it was actually kind of a it wasn't even really white it was kind of a dingy kind of a brownish yeah, that's what it is. Kind of, yeah. yeah so if you didn't uh, you might not have saw my entryway when y'all were here a few weeks ago but i actually have a, a cotton kind of little uh growth kind of thing coming out of oh. the you know like on these benches and stuff uh, like there oh, you go mm -hmm. right as you come in to the right you know and, mm -hmm. and i got it specifically yeah. you know, for that reminder, so to speak. Right, you know? right. No, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah. It's, I wouldn't mind owning a piece again because you know, mm -hmm. growing up, I always see that, and you know, it's like, man, that's that's not what the history book tell you because right. that's not what it looked like. Yeah. It is, it is, like you said, you they didn't think about that. Like this stuff is light. You talking about a billion pounds? Yeah. It's not. When you think of a cotton ball, y'all like, know you get a cotton ball to, to mm -hmm. put in your ear when you got an earache. Which, uh, I don't know if we do that, but you know, you, 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 didn't, you didn't ask no questions though, because if you did, Mama said us would whoop that at. Hey, you my boy, I, I said leave that cotton in your ear, right? <laughs> and, uh, and, and shout out to my parents. I'm not sure which one, maybe both. I said I love yeah. the discussion. With cable news, you can tune into whatever network sports you believe. That's, uh, oh, that's right. Oh, absolutely. 
And when, when yeah. we talk about those terms that were used towards us, like lazy, I, talk, I say this all the time, lazy, savages. That's who yeah. those people were during that time. Lazy. You don't want to do it, but you want somebody else to do it. Yeah, right. and they, when they're Please free, you get mad and say, oh, you can't be free. I need you to still work for me for free. Please don't talk to me about lazy. Stop. 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 Please stop. He goes beyond what industry my family to Louisiana held help help build the Tabasco, Tabasco uh, company by force. Man. Uh, sadly, they still pick cotton in, in the Mississippi Delta. My sister and I went to the cotton field when I was eight. She was 12. We did it for two days until my dad. That's <laughs> my mom. Wow. I don't know what happened wow. there. Uh, we, we, I figured, right, okay, we good. We can, we can decide. Um, and so immediately from that, he went into Darren Martin, who was a law student, mind you, also a former Obama staffer that was moving in to his own apartment and was harassed by not one, and I never heard that story. Not three. I saw, right. I saw LeBron, don't I, when he was with the yeah. four. <laughs> six, with six different police officers. Six. Yeah, six. In his yeah. hallway. And he's like, what, what is this? Yeah, and this, yeah he said somebody called said he had, possibly had a weapon on him. Like, and you see one of them with this had a smile on his face the whole time. Like, he yeah. thought the shit was fine. Right, 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 yeah. You know? yeah. And there was exactly. one in the street clothes. Like, you got a, you yeah. got a detective? You got to detect like, Oh, them. no. That, hey, that's the game, too. Yeah. They, you know, think about how many of these incidents have happened by off duty police officers. Right. You well, know, the have been task force uh, in a lot of instances uh, on, the, on the northern part of the country. They they have dress down days as well. Mm-hmm. And they just ride, ride around in unmarked cars. And they call, you know, in the city of Chicago, they call yeah. them the jump out boys. Can and, speak? Go ahead, Baker. Yeah. So uh, they could have just been on duty cops and jeans. To make to make it, you know, to be unmarked. Yeah. Yeah. So and then what, of, what we really need to start, what we need as a community, what we need to focus on is these things right here. When you call the police on a black man, you are really attempting to murder him. Yeah. That hey. Man. Hey. Exactly. And then just when like you like rise, it's like when they got when you say up. stuff like that, when you sensationalize it. A flat out lie. You know, he's got a weapon, uh, he's threatening right. me, or whatever the case may be. You're hyping them up. You're getting their adrenaline jumping before they even get there. Yeah. A pr- prime example. Uh, this just happened recently. T.O. If that yeah, wasn't T.O., oh, yeah. chances yeah. are he would have been shot to, to death. Oh, yeah. So that this, this yeah. stuff happens every day. That, yeah, how about this? New York City. In those parts of the state, like Massachusetts, this is what I like about it. This cat called out Massachusetts. He's like, this didn't happen in such and such oh, and yeah. such. This was Massachusetts who started this, right. you know. And then he came back at New York a little later, too, and said, this is New York City. New York City was trying to play both sides, motherfucker. They were trying to succeed, <laughs> succeed right. you know, because they right. knew, shit, we can sail to the South yeah. you know. We can be so in the middle. telling them. You know, yeah. so I'm like, wow, they don't get, they ain't getting no passes this time. A lot of oh, times no. you try to give northern states passes right. yeah. for being all on the right side of history, yes. and that yeah. ain't the case. Yeah, he's like, no, we can, he's like, wait a minute, we can play both sides. We can be the middleman, and, you know, but yeah, no, you're right. New York was getting it, too. I was like, no, nah, y'all getting all this. You get yeah, all this smoke. It was, that's equal opportunity. He wasn't, he wasn't, yeah. he wasn't picking and choosing. He went, he dived into everything. Yeah. Yeah, he just, because he just follows the facts, you know, I, just yeah. like a good detective would do. Let the fact I'm not yeah. I'm not after nobody. I'm after the yeah. truth. And I'm if the truth you. colors you, yeah. That's yeah. it. And see, that's yeah. the thing, man. People always, you know, you hear about abolitionists. Abolitionists, just because you're abolitionist does not mean that you're not you're anti-slavery. Yeah, that right. means that means you are being undercut by slavery. So you want everybody to be working for a wage so you can get even more money. If a slave is making a dollar a day, you want three. You know, if, you know, a black person is, excuse me, if a black or formerly enslaved person is making a dollar a day, you are going to, as a white man, ask for three. Mm-hmm. Because he's not even human. He's subhuman and you're paying him a wage. That's why right. a lot of abolitionists were, were, were championing 
uh, emancipating Africans because if you are paying them, you're forced to pay us. And if you're not paying them, you don't have to pay because they can come in and do what I'm doing for free. And all they have to do is house and feed them. But I am struggling. So therefore, I need that person free. Yeah. I mean, some of the most racism I've ever faced in my life is right here in the Cook County, Chicago, Illinois. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, it, it is. It is crazy. And then it goes directly into the Terrence Crutcher, which um, just the way the way that we are killed just in the street. I mean, I, I'm, there's endless amount of stories. Mm -hmm. You just let them just let them lay there. Don't 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 respect him at all. Don't respect who he was. And I appreciate how they went into the story and he interviewed his his sister. And twin sister. Said, you, you said he was a uh, she's a this is my doctor. sister. She's a PhD and she has a Terrence Kircher organization to combat incidences like this because things like this must be brought to light. This is why you must engage. You must get involved. You must learn the laws of the land. And people continue to just go through the motions. If you continue to go through the motions. This will show up at your door. It showed up at my door already. Yeah, you know. So, yeah. And and, and one thing I, I appreciate about this this documentary as well is that he uh, he he made sure to pinpoint the Andrew Jacksons. He made sure to, to yeah. pinpoint all of those people that are on money. Those people that have statues. Like, right. what's the backstory? How did they get this statue? Right. How did they get on this on the twenty dollar bill? And that that's the part that I that I appreciate it. I, I mean, when it was over, I don't know about y'all, but I was like, man, you, it, it it could have been. I would have watched if it was four hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, he, I'm sure. Yeah. He, he honestly, he probably has enough information, as they say, left on the cutting floor that mm -hmm. he just had to pack within this hour and fifty two minutes. But I can't even imagine how much he did not expound on. And what he did not continue to really just kind of dissect. I mean, yeah, no, I, I even if it was, even if each episode, you know, if it was ten episodes or whatever the case was, like I, I would have watched it because it was just, I could not stop watching it. And then when you got to the war on drugs and how that's another rabbit hole, yeah, and it, it's just, oh man, it was just so much. You know, and then we, we don't want to talk about the I know I'm getting ahead of things, but the national anthem, how they take a, a whole line out of the national anthem, but then yet you want to tell me about disrespecting the flag? Like, come on, man. Yeah, and I can't uh, and I can't unknow that the term I can't unknow the right, right. I can't right. unknow the stanza. Yeah. So to stand up for any part of it, you can't just because you cut out the third part. Yeah. I can't you can't rewrite that, man. You yeah. can't, you can't that, erase that from your mind. The national anthem was not for us. It was right. not written for us in yeah. mind. It was written, Brand, for it was written yeah. by somebody who owned the slaves and a right. bunch of them. Yes. Right. Yeah, man. It's just, it's just, it's just, and it's, it, it, it shows you the, the definite tyranny and insult that is, that's thrust upon our community on a regular basis. And we just sit back and let it, we, we allow it. And it's just that commentary. We 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 accept it. We we we. Oh man, see, it's gonna get better. It's not gonna get better via osmosis. Oh, we're not yeah. gonna hope and we're not gonna hope this out of existence. Yeah. It's, you've got to keep have having it. these kind of conversations. But when you come to the table, you've got to be willing to accept that. Hey, this is gonna sting a little bit. It's gonna sting a lot of bit. Mm. Oh yeah. But you've got to understand. This is the only way you're gonna face it and try to fix it. Exactly. And try to work toward or move yeah. forward or something, whatever you're trying to do to it. You, you're not gonna just brush it over and we're just gonna keep recycling clips and documentaries. You know what's tripped out? This is the second documentary that I found out that Hollywood slapped us in the face in 1992 with the movie Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump's grandfather was a Klansman, right? Mm -hmm. And they also stole the story of Dick Gregory and, and Forrest Gump as well. Remember they stole it? Yeah. Mm. Like, remember we did the Dick Gregory documentary, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we found out that Dick Gregory ran across country. Oh, that was yeah. Like, yeah. Even before Gump had a beard, just like Dick yeah, Gregory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Like, it's, just, it's, it's, it's the subtle insults that make you want to, it makes your stomach turn. Like, like yeah. the beginning of the document, documentary, my man said, I got to go because I'm sick. And as I'm watching this, 
I'm looking at Vern, uh, Vernon Forrest. And then, and like he said, these, these statues and these things were created by a group called the Daughters of the Confederacy. Mm-hmm. And we start, we're talking about 1940. 1940. Right. Yeah. He said these weren't erected like in the 1800s. He said these right. were erected like of the 50s and 40s, the, you know. Yeah. Like I remember listening to this and he mentioned uh, the 20th of uh, December, 1947. The only reason that makes sense to me, the only reason that sticks out to you, because my mother was born on the 13th, same year. Seven days before my mother was here, seven days later. I mean, my yep. mo- mother's here. Seven days later, you start some, you start madness, mm-hmm. and you know, and then you just realize how much you can reach out and touch this nonsense. Right. And the it, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Even and with the we, Edmund Pettus Bridge that they were talking about, like he was trying yeah. to get the name changed, and it's just like now. Nah. Yeah, right, we, we gotta we gotta continue to honor these people for yeah. what for what they did for for. For that part of the country, me and Ben know uh, Stone Mountain. Stone Mountain oh. is a Confederate. Yeah, it's, got uh, the clan. Uh, it's, got, it's got two or three Confederate and Klan members on the card to the side of it. Card to the side of the wall, and nobody says anything about it. You know, that used celebrate. to be a meeting ground for the Klan. Yeah, yeah. Why yeah. you still is? I don't know. Yeah, they stay. They there now. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we get back, we'll touch on uh, the, the slave trade and the guy that he was being interviewed in that, I guess, museum. So we'll be right back. What do you get when you watch or listen to the Life Happens podcast? Well, I'll let them tell you. Kim and I are both ministers of the gospel, and the Life Happens podcast is a beautiful balance by simply taking our spirituality with real life and merging it together to create a beautiful balance and that's what we do bs3 network proudly presents life happens podcast where christianity and life intersect live every wednesday at 7 p.m central Another great job by Cole Johnson. Killing these commercials, these ads, bro. Killing them. Killing them. Killing them. <laughs> Killing them, again. Killing them. Yeah, he just sent one this weekend for Marriage is Real that I got to get over to you. Ooh, I can't wait. Can't wait. Yeah. No. Oh, man. Uh, cool. So this is my dad. He says, my grandfather did share cropping with cotton and tobacco field in King Street. South Carolina. Carolina. Uh, there were some black folks that were educated enough to actually uh, manipulate the system to own property that's still in mm. the bank. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Make it work for you. And I remember we went when I was, I was probably in. I don't know. You might have to, might have to put it the age I was, uh, Pops, on that. But we went to South Carolina and we seen the cotton fields that were there. Um, so, yeah. you know, there's there's a lot. South Carolina, North Carolina, all in that in that area. Tobacco. It, it's probably not even even. I can't imagine. It's probably nowhere close to South Carolina, cotton field, tobacco field. But supposedly on forty five, when you go to Houston, I think that's a little outside of Ennis or or Palmer. There's a cotton field. Off oh, of you don't have to go that far. Well, that's on where I've seen it. But yeah, from here you don't have to go that far. Yeah, well, that's just what I'm traveling. Let's deal some in Terrell. Let's deal some oh, yeah, just, uh, Sherman area. Bind them off in there and stuff. Oh yeah. Oh, it's, it, it well, I just noticed it as a kid when I was going to Houston. Yeah, that's yeah, right. I, I, I can have you if you want to be picking some cotton by seven thirty in the morning. I can have you in some places if, if that's oh, it. yeah. <laughs> uh, Walmart, <laughs> Walmart right up the street. Yeah, it ain't, yeah. yeah. ain't that far. Uh, they just so, got machines that do the shit now. You know? yeah. The the aspect where they talked about the names, how they were changed every time they were sold. That man, that, yeah. that, that ain't that, that something, man? Yeah, that right there. Man. Name change every time. Yeah, every time. something. I did not. I did not know that. Did y'all know that? No. Yeah, I, I knew it. Not every time. I didn't, I have to say once again that wasn't. I mean, it makes cool sense. It makes that. sense, right? Because if they're my property, you're gonna give them my name. Right. You know, I, I don't right. want them to still be settlers if it's a dog plantation. You know, 
Yeah. So oh, I, I understand. Yeah, even before that, he, the, the yeah, process, before then, I he didn't said understand the, the gravity of it because a name is big, yeah. right? And even before then, didn't he say it, it took a while before they started putting the last name on names? Eighteen seventy. Yeah, eighteen ninety. Eighteen ninety. Okay, because it yeah, the census. Yeah. Yep. And I guess we should have known because you know Toby tried to tell us. I mean, Kunta Kinte Sorry, tried Lamar. to tell us that they, you know, that they change the names and shit. You know, yeah. it's a good name. Say it. Yeah, and then you know, and when they start getting those names. That was the that's the beauty. That's the genius in the community. <laughs> I'm keeping the community. Like the Wilkes, man. Get it. <laughs> what? Yeah. Three more names. This Wilkes, man. But that's why you got names like Freeman and Black and White and, and right, Black and Brown, yeah. right? Because you try to disassociate yourself with that. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then immediately after that, another part that hurt when they talked about the shackles, which they had shackles for adults. I mean, that guy was laying it, laying it all out there, and yeah. shackles for adults and kids. Everybody was shackled. Yeah. But I didn't, I didn't yeah, know and visiting a couple of places, you know, in, in my travels, you know, I've been, I, I've had the, I don't know that I'd call it a pleasure, but I've been able to experience some of those, yeah. um, you know, the, the neck braces and, mm, yeah, you know, yeah. some of the feet shackle and some of the punishment tools that they use, man. And I, I mean, it, to say barbaric is, Right is an understatement. It does not do it justice, man. It it, it is, yeah. I mean, you know, it, it is ridiculous, man. You know, um, some of the tactics and tools they use to, which is why, like on these, some of these sets. One of the movies we reviewed, uh, it didn't get a great review from us, but they used this this tool. It may have been the, you, you know, where they had her sitting out in front of the house for a long time and stuff oh, like that. They had but it they in there. They didn't have to make up these props. They can go find these things oh, yeah. that they can use from these movies and stuff yeah. like that. They legit authentic stuff, you know. Right. That's still out there. Uh, yeah, maybe. Antebellum, Antebellum. she was in that box. Antebellum, yeah. Because they had the uh the neck brace on her, and they had the neck yeah. brace on the brother. So he made noise every time he moved. Yeah, that ain't yeah. yeah. This is this again, you know, it, it is it's not like that we needed it, but th those right. tools debunk that initial guy's conversation. Yeah, we treat them like family. family. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Family. We don't do that to family. Yeah, right, absolutely. We do that to family. And we family not trying to get away from you like that, unless yeah. it's right. after Thanksgiving and everybody asks you to clean up. Yeah. Well, what happens when you put raisins in? Well, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Raisins in your potato salad. Yeah, I, yeah, right. <laughs> and when we when we go back to well, after I saw after I saw oh. my mama putting raisins in her biscuits, I was like, oh. Uh, Not my mama. I let it ride. We we we'll go back to uh, exterminate all the brutes when they were <laughs> they were chopping off thumbs. Is that is that wow. what they were doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With how you watch? Yeah, like, yeah. Just, you don't no, do that. have you or have you do it? Have you do it? Yeah, have you do yeah. it? Yeah. So I mean, look at the back of your Levi jeans. Yeah. This is an example of them ripping a human being apart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cut you in the back, man. That uh, label. There's a place in Texas where you can go experience picking cotton mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to be remembered. I'm good. From black folks. Yeah. yeah. I'm good. No, nah, I just go to Walmart out five, man. Right. I just go Grab put on some new draws. No, nah, I'm good, man. I'm good. Yeah, I, I enjoy actually listening to older people talk about oh, some absolutely. of the experiences they had because it gives me a new appreciation for where, oh, yeah. you know, I am individually and where we are collectively. Right. Um, and, and if anything, it gives me motivation to keep pushing, you know, because um, if you know where some of our folks came from, man, and know where we at. And, 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 you know, sometimes, you know, we as people, man, at the end of the day, we're some spoiled brats, too. You know, we, we really are, you know. And and so, like, for instance, in this documentary, when they talked about during the bus boycott, these black women, man, getting up at four o'clock in the morning to walk to work, to right. be maids and cooks and nannies and whatever in their houses and then walking right. back 
just so they can support the bus boycott and getting home right. at seven, eight o'clock at night and still having to, you know, take care of their right. family and stuff like that, man. Think about that the next time your ass finna call in sick for some bullshit. Right. You know what I'm saying, man? Yeah. You know what I mean? Seriously. I'm still calling you know in sick, but I ain't gonna think about it. Huh? I'm still calling in sick, but I am gonna think about it. Think about some of the things that we complain yeah. about. Right. right at the end of the day, but like we, but, but but like we said a few, well, we were watching. Well, I just watching the throwback. Uh, that's what we said. Your your mom would cook enough food for two days because if you mm-hmm. knew something like that was calling for activism and for mm-hmm. action, right. you made sure the kids at home, the oldest child over here, they weren't even really that old. You had food because guess what. I'm not getting home right away. I need to go stand up for something real quick. Yeah. But I made sure that you're going to have some in the kitchen. So, yeah, no, absolutely. I I, I hear dog 100. Yeah, the uh, stories of my grandmother, man, who my mama, when she tell me, man, think about this, man. Your mama sitting there talking to you. She tell me, you know, they call their mama Madea, even though that was their mama. They called her mm-hmm. Madea. And she goes, I ain't never seen Madea fix herself a, a, a plate. She didn't fix her plate whenever we she fed the kids. She ate off of their plates. If anybody left anything, she just picked the, you know, if it was a yeah, little, right. you know, right. chicken, a little meat left on that chicken yeah. bone or so a little yeah, piece yeah, of yeah. cornbread left. That's what she ate, man. Right. And you think I can sit there and listen to that shit, man, and not be moved by that? Yeah, no, that's big. You know? That's big. And, we, and I got food that I'm throwing away and giving to my damn housekeeper so it don't go bad. Right. Right. And my grandmother, I, who I never got to met, didn't even get to fix her own plate. Right. The next time you cut, you catch me being a punk about any damn thing. If y'all don't check me, y'all out of order. Y'all oh, should be yeah, like, absolutely. boy, do you you know where you what's, come? Do you know what's what right about that name thing? No, it's <laughs> plenty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, it just it's it's, it's 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 ridiculous, man. Where where yeah. we done come oh, from, absolutely. man, and right. we got the nerve, right? I be grateful. Right, yeah, man. Exactly. Yeah, walk like somebody owe us something. And then we pass that down to our kids that not being grateful. That's a like, like about ben ben about jeans, jeans, We make it. Ben work. ain't gonna get to sleep tonight if she don't find out about these damn jeans, man. <laughs> Tell her what the deal is, <laughs> Oh, uh, Erica. Well, the Levi <laughs> jeans. I don't know. They may have amended at this point, but the Levi jeans used to be uh, two uh, plow horses yes. pulling the jeans into different directions. Which yes. is a, a metaphoric way of showing you what they used to do to people Slave. who attempted to run right. away from enslavement. They literally came up with a, a diagnosis called drachephobia, which means a person who wanted to run away from enslavement. And what they would do is gather all the other enslaved Africans and tie one horse to one leg and arm, the oh, horse yeah. to the other horse to the other leg and arm, and slap the horses on the behind. They would take yeah. off split the man in half the levi jeans used to the logo used to be representation of a pair of pants that was strong enough to hold up two plow horses but we all know metaphorically they were showing you what they used to do to people yeah and there's uh, i mean there's a ton of products food products oh you know clothing uh household products that that would have some shit on it that if you really paid attention to it because they know we don't really we ain't sitting around looking at no damn yeah. labels on shit like that you know to try right. to see what they depicted right. but yeah. if you knew half the products out there and what they represented yeah it it, it is a sad commentary um the things that we celebrate and uh and we we, we patronize which yeah. you know that's why i talk so about go, that. go throw being 501s away right now eric i know that's what you're getting ready to do <laughs> buddy lee testing i ain't got, I ain't got no 501 Five oh threes, DNA. I don't know what you get. Four fours. <laughs> oh, them tough skins. What they? What they label? I bet you know that. <laughs> uh, the, the more the more Walmart special Levi's. Uh uh-uh, uh jeans. <laughs> those Levi's, uh uh-uh. uh. Those gas, uh uh-uh. uh. Those Jabal, uh uh-uh. uh. These, uh uh-uh. uh. Not these. Um, now, I want to I kick it to Wilkes because you mentioned this uh, early on the thumb and the fingerprints um, on the buildings in yes. South Carolina. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of it's it's so weird because I've seen buildings like that uh, down in Terrell and uh, even uh, a church that was built years ago in our family, which is still there. But when he was and it kind of dawned on me because when you see those even downtown and some of those areas, but when you see those prints and you see those holes in the brick and the mortar, it, it's like he said, it's almost or well, it's not almost. They're pretty much saying, hey, I, I was here like I helped establish this like this cobblestone street like we built this. We made this, you know, it's like don't. So don't right. forget, like this is right. a message. Yeah, no, it, it it blew my mind because it's like, man, I've seen some of those markings. Like, I've seen those. Even, you know, it's kind of like, it's just like, wow, so that's what that is? That's what I'm looking at? That's what I'm experiencing? Mm. Mind-blowing, man. I was, yeah. I was you, you cannot erase it. You, as much as you want to, as much as you want to yeah. try, you cannot erase it. Right. Well, yeah, another no, thing that it shocked me, it shocked me that he didn't mention this, is uh, that those also are maps. Oh yeah, yes. Also, you think, mm -hmm. like you say, you know, if if you are an enslaved African, it was a way of it was a way it of was being a way of directing you. safety. Yeah, sixteen bricks down the wall, you make it right after the fifteenth brick. You know, yes. it's it's something yes. in the ground to see people. See, look, look, look. And it had to be. It couldn't be obvious to where right. they, they would right. be obvious. Your arrow or something. And then see what what what. See this this is this is the part in which you must know your history, right? And when you know your history, you realize that uh, you find out that uh, Africans, people like Mansa Musa, came over here. Africa. It's like that's why that, that's why you see that map. Let's go. Let me back map a little bit. That's why you see the map that you see today of the world. And Africa looks like it's the same size as South America. But the, the honest to God truth is, when you in West Africa, the, the fastest way to get to America is Maine. That's why they all always ended up in Maine. So if you leave in Africa, you, you go to Maine. That's the fastest trip. You would think Florida, right? But no, right. it's Maine. That's how big the land mass is. So when you had people over here for hundreds of literally hundreds of thousands of years i mean excuse me tens of thousands of years right so you got people here ten thousand years ago and you, you you've been mentally trained to believe that harriet tuckman is just this way out super lady who just figured it out no her that's ancestral teachings to teach right. you how to get from pillar to post to get to freedom and right. and 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 even now, even now, just think we we mentioned Wilkes. I bet you when I say what I say, Wilkes, it didn't even cross your mind. This is when you know you and me speak about epigenetics on a regular basis, right? Epigenetics uh, yeah. is things that we unintentionally pass right. down without yeah. even knowing. Yeah. If you get a group of children tomorrow, lay out a piece of concrete, what's the first thing they do? Pow, I'm a I'm a mm -hmm. document, I was here. Yeah. That's not right. Mm -hmm. Right. They're going to market. They're going to market to say, yeah, they're going to market. I was here. You right. know, graffiti. Yeah. I was here. You know, right. you watch something simple as the movie B Street. Ramon was making uh, sure yeah. when you yeah. come to the Bronx, you go, yeah. no, Ramon. I mean, yeah. hey, Didn't I remember at one point I worked for the city train here. You know, I spent, you know, I'm walking through, when they train you walking through the subway of Chicago. And I was, I'm walking through the subway. And I start laughing and I'm looking up and everybody was like, Hey man, what you laughing about? I'm like, nothing. And my man, Chris Ryan, how he's supposed to show Chris Ryan, how I say B, what you laughing at? I say, Hey man, remember that thing that said hip hop? He was like, yeah. I said, I wrote that down here. Everybody was wondering why I was so comfortable. I'm like, cause I used to run down here illegally. Right. So yeah. I, when, when you said that, well, last week when you mentioned it, it struck a chord. I'm like, Hmm. Yeah, so this no, is yeah, it's a new, I didn't yeah. invent graffiti. Graffiti and glyphs are right. part. And then look, look, look. Take it back five thousand years. When those damn pyramids and Giza were built. Mm -hmm. Those same etchings on the pyramids yeah, and right. Giza are, are in uh, right, right. South America, right. yeah, in Central America, and in Mexico. Absolutely. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's allegedly a, a pyramid. Yeah, and those symbols look more came. like us than them. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. Max. They had lips like men on them. They ain't look just like men. <laughs> <laughs> like those Soul Train Award lips. <laughs> <laughs>
Shout out to uh, Theodore, aka Blue Blue Street Free in the building. Says so one much of the nominees for supporter of the year of BS3 Network. Yes, how about we, that? We got we got a couple of those in the building. Keisha was also nominated. Keisha, yeah, that's right. Uh, so we we appreciate Thursday. Those. Let's go ahead and give a quick shout out. Thursday at eight thirty. Perspective it, produced it, it by yours schedule. truly and BS three uh, will be out on Thursday at eight thirty p.m. Central Time. Directly after Elevate podcast. Yeah. So we uh, we got to yeah, I got to wrap it up. <laughs> yeah. Elevate, <laughs> Elevate get on the run. So we got to wrap it up. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. But um, the 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 part where it talked about the slave ships and the names of the, the names. slave ships, right? That was a nut. That was another part that was just like uh, destiny. Yeah, hope, man. Hope, hope. Right. Like yeah. hope, desire. Right. Yeah. Right. But you know that ain't nothing new because we'll we'll take some military. The Nina, the Nina, and the Santa Maria. Yeah. Both <laughs> <laughs> ah. Hey man, stick to restoration. Top of the bars, baby. <laughs> but you know, I mean, you know, things like this, man. This is why um, I, I really like history because. It teaches you things that you never would have known. Like I'm gonna give y'all a look. I'm gonna give y'all a piece of history that 99% of the people that walk the face of the, uh, the country don't know. George Washington had to sanction the war, the Revolutionary War. He had to get permission from a group of black people called the Moors. Mm. Yes, and they they bankrolled the Revolutionary War. So so. You remember a few months ago we did a documentary and I was like, hey, people don't get the Haitians enough credit for right. uh, for initiating a Louisiana purchase by kicking Napoleon in his behind, right? Exactly. We also don't get the Moors, which is not uh, evidence of a, a, a hue, right? But it is a piece of a boat that guides the boat. It's the Moor. That's how you mm -hmm. guide it. That's why the people who ran the seas are called Moors and those mm -hmm. are the people from Northern Africa and I did a video last week on my show to identify that see these are the things see this is why again culturally responsive teaching that's why yes. it's so paramount paramount because as Dalk, Dalk is going to give us a surprise in a second but Dalk empowered himself today he didn't even tell us what it was but as Dalk was speaking he felt like he was, you know, and, and right. not in a bad way. He was roostering about when he was getting this information today at seven thirty, because it was like it empowered yeah. him. Yeah, and this is yeah. why you that affirmation, man. It that it affirmation, hit, it hits. man. That's that's this is why it's kind of like what Doc. That, not to cut you, I'm sorry. No, no, it's kind of like what Doc said a few. It's kind of like what Doc said a few weeks ago. Until you speak something and you hear yourself saying it, no mm. doubt, it, it will trigger all kinds of thoughts and uh like dang like how long have i been on this earth and i didn't notice that and it took today for me saying that out loud finally at this moment like what took so long but it's not it's not that you need to know what took so long you just need to know when the moment was right for you to hear you saying <laughs> because i need your mind <laughs> no, you, you know, like pastor Dodd trying to give you a hint no nah, uh <laughs> I, I tell y'all when, when the show go off. I tell y'all. <laughs> I tell y'all. Wow. But I, I think the also the aspect he was talking about throughout this entire documentary is how these things are not being taught in school. No, they're not. They're being no. pulled out, and oh, slavery was just a a small occurrence. And again, we we talked about this. That's why it's our responsibility to teach our kids. Say no. This is what it was, and it was ugly. Right. It was right. ugly. It was brutal. It was it was uh, inhumane. It was savage. It was it was all of those terms. But you need to know. Yeah, and that's that's, that's right. disappointing. Our good brother, our good brother Tyler Perry, saying he's not going to teach his children race. I, I get it because race is a social socially con is a social construct. It's not real. Thank you, thank you, Charles uh, Darwin. Pope Julius, right? Pope Julius created yeah. race in 1514 when he sanctioned the first enslaved African. Mm -hmm. So that's when race came about. It used to just be he's from Niger, he's from Greece, right. he's from Spain. Yeah. And Pope yeah. Julius said these people are he dehumanized Africans, and that's when you right. became right. 
a person, you know. Yeah, and religion yeah. used to be what set off wars, you know, yeah. Catholics versus Protestants and Buddhists. Oh, Jewish. Like yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because when you go to Ireland, right, they ain't doing that. That's why the Irish did. See, people people don't, like, again, when you don't know your history, you don't know the history of the world, you don't understand why Irish didn't become white to 1977. That's why they used to have signs, no Irish no, no N words, no Jews, no dogs in front of uh, uh, restaurants, right? Mm. Because they have never taken down the Black Madonna in Ireland to this very day. Mm. You go to pubs in Ireland and you look up and they have uh, homage, uh, homage being paid to our culture. And we don't know it, but they know it. You know what I mean? Oh, right, and, right. And, and, and I'm gonna speak about imagery. I will get on that. Some of the friendliest people I met in New York City were some people in visiting New York from Ireland, mm. and we were on a tour together. And when I yeah. say them jokers were so friendly, it wasn't even yeah. funny, man. Because they understand the oppression of the uh, the, the the people on the continent of uh, Eurasia. Because I'm not calling it Europe. Eurasia. That's why. That's, that's why when I see things like it, you know, I was I was watching the show on Netflix. It's it's a whatever show just to pass time. But it's about the rise of England, and it's like, but this is exactly what you're doing as a crusader. You're forcing your thoughts of how your religion is. The Crusades were bloody. You're literally forcing the word of God on people by if, by killing them and calling them pagans and casting them out. Watch this, Wilkes. And those Crusaders today are evangelical Christians. I'm through exactly. talking. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. So, so check it out. So this again, this is what the third documentary where they made a statement similar to this. He who controls the past controls the future. Mm -hmm. right. right. So they made this again. And again, think about what's being taught in schools and and what our country admits to and doesn't admit to, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So, again, is our plight? Are we spending enough time on the correction of the past. In other words, that narrative, are we spending enough time? Is that how they're controlling the future still mm -hmm. to this day? Because they're mm -hmm. telling the story the way they want yeah. to tell it. All right. Yeah, I mean, Absolutely. look at it this way, dog. I mean, I know I know your, your question was rhetorical, but look no, at it no. this way. Okay. Uh, 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 look at it this way, bro. Um, when you, we, we, we are listening to the lion hunter tell the story of the lion. <laughs> right, you know what I'm saying. The lion hunter is saying, "See, this is how lions get down." And you know, no, yeah. no, you you don't know right. that. How you know? Right. You know, and we are such a communal and, 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 and communal people and clan word. You know, we, we're clan. You know, you know, like, like my favorite person, one, my favorite person in history, uh, Kwame Ture. He's commonly known as Stokely Carmichael. It's family. Uh, 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 it's it, it, it's it's family unit. It's clan, it's culture, it's community, right? That's the way we're cycled, like kente cloth. Mm -hmm. It is the Ashanti tribe taking over a tapestry tribe. This tribe had nothing to do with war. All they did was they were tailors, Fabrics right? And, clothes, yep. mm -hmm. and then they said, we can't, we don't know y'all language, y'all don't know our language, but you're going right. to take our flag and your flag and put it together. Now we have kente cloth, right? That's, we're genetically predisposed to meld uh, when you look at the same Ashanti, uh, uh, the Shanti tribe, one of the greatest warrior tribes on the continent, and the Zulu tribe, the Shantis in North uh, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, the Zulu nation is in South Africa, right? But they both have this as a, a, a as a mean of war. If Dawk, if the Dawkins and the, and the Williams get into it, if the Dawkins win, if the Dawkins win in this battle. They create a path so the Williams can retreat, and so then they can right, send somebody right. over there. It's not for destruction, mm, and yeah. this is why you have just to establish dominance. It's really it's like some right. certain animals in the wild; they're not fighting to kill; they fight right. to, to, to exactly. establish dominance. Exactly. exactly. And, yeah. and and see, that's why you have that again. This is back. That I told that story to show this. You have people who well, Africans enslaved other Africans. No. Child wow. slavery in America and slavery wow. on the continent are two totally different things. And, and, and for those who don't understand this, my the very first story in the Bible that I know that I know of is Joseph. I was taught Joseph before I was taught uh, uh, Adam and Eve. I, I learned that, right? Yeah. Joseph went from a dude thrown into a ditch, 
with his right. with his beautiful jacket, put into incarceration, and then put into slavery, and he became king. Now, until you show me where Kunta Kante and Chicken George and one of those dudes became the massa, don't yeah. tell me about chattel slavery versus slavery on the continent. Mm -hmm. And this is why the history is important because when you find out, no, we were had if we'd have been left to our own devices on the continent, it would be one nation on that continent, not 52 different countries, oh, right. not 2,800 different oh, sure. dialects. It would be one nation. And then, and only then, and then you would have seen a totally different history we see today. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and especially right. with the northern parts of Africa, I mean, you have, <laughs> you, you have a lot of uh, Afghanistan influence, Muslim influence. Oh, yeah. You, I, don't you know. Have, yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> they they have literally removed blackness from northern africa oh morocco is muslim oh, yeah. morocco yeah, yeah. morocco yeah. is muslim okay and egypt is just kind of hanging on but right egypt yeah. egyptians don't even want to admit that they are african at this point yeah. when they, you, yeah, you would think they, yeah you would think egypt was its own right it's it's its own, own little right. space it's yeah. Own, yeah 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 and, and then like this is show you how insulting when you when you let somebody else dictate what the what what, what the what, how the world looks to you, uh, you know, um, looking for employment, <laughs> you fill out an application, they ask you your culture, right? Mm -hmm. White, uh, 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 black, black, American, whatever, whatever, whatever. It says Egyptian, white, in parentheses next to it now. Oh, really? Wow. Yes. Wow. Go to go to go to indeed.com right now. Anybody challenge wow. me. Wow. Indeed.com, uh uh LinkedIn, wow. or wherever you fill out your yeah. applications for for employment. Mm -hmm. There's Egyptian and in parentheses it says white. Even oh, the uh 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 the, what what uh what wow. Afghanistan people, you know, Iraqi uh, yeah. uh Persian people, mm -hmm. uh, uh they have white next to them, but they they're pushing back. They like no, nah, we ain't white. Yeah, like not we're even, not. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I, I wanted to, to for the sake of time because we could definitely do a I'm part sorry, two. Man, no, you good, you good, you good. Um, we could definitely do a part two, but I wanted to point out a couple of things and a couple of names. Uh, it talked about how their 12 presidents owned slave people. I didn't know the number was that high. 12. Yeah. Uh yeah. it talked about Eric Gardner. We 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 know who he was. Mm -hmm. It also talked about New York. And on 1711 to 1762, uh, it was a slave market where you could rent out slaves for the day. That, when, when I heard that, which I've never watched the entire movie, but that put 12 years of slave into more perspective. Because it was mm -hmm. like, you're walking around a free man, but you have people looking to pretty much, it's, it's, it's trafficking. It's human trafficking. Yeah, I, I could only imagine how many unwritten stories or untold yeah. stories there are just you like that, man. Oh, yeah, that, absolutely. I mean, the second I saw that movie, I thought to myself, shit, I bet that was happening all over oh, the place. Yes. And then, like you said, and then we talked about name changing. So nobody knew who he was and where he was. I mean, you know, it's, oh, man. You know what? Yeah. It's this book. I've been wanting to tell y'all about this book literally, literally for a year. I cannot think of this book. I read this book right before we did, right before we start this show, right? And the book entails how me, you, us four, is we are in class. Hmm. And people who were uh, bounty hunters will come in our class. And not we're not talking about high school. Yeah. When the high school then, it was just, you learn how to read and write, right. and then you, you hit the streets. Cool. We're in class, eight, nine-year-old young men, and they would come in here and go, you, uh, uh, Ivan, Let's go. And next yeah. thing you know, Ivan will wake up in Virginia. Mm. Wow. 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 So this this isn't see, you know, again. That's what I that's what I was saying a few months ago. It's like it, we were talking about something and I can't remember now, but it's like we literally have ancestors that lived in a world that had no defense, that had nobody to back them up or stand up for them. You literally live in a world where men on horses could come right to your house, Virginia. men in pickup trucks to come to your house and drag you out in the they middle of the out. night mm -hmm. and, and go hang you from the nearest tree, but judge but, and executioner. I just want to I want to correct that a little bit, Wilkes. 
because see that's the narrative and i'm not saying you're saying anything wrong yeah, right right it's the narrative that i want to do away with because when you read the book uh uh, uh that nonviolent stuff will get you killed and, and 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 how the civil rights movement was started by people who were licking shots back oh yeah, yeah you're absolutely. right uh, when you read, uh, what's her name? Rosa Parks. I want to call her Ali B. Wells so bad. When you read Rosa Parks' autobiography, do you know mm -hmm. the very first chapter starts off Rosa saying, and uh, my grandfather, she lived in the house with her grandfather. I'm going to paraphrase. She lived in the house with her grandfather. Anytime the clan get riled up, her grandfather wasn't going to bed. He sat on, on his front oh, porch, absolutely. two forty fives on his lap, and a Winchester right. rifle, and said, if they come up in here, I'm going to kill them. Rosa, who we've been taught, they like, like like they they, they I, I call it this 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 is not a real word. I, they Jesusized uh, uh, Rosa <laughs> and Martin and Martin King. Yeah, and and and, and what I mean by Jesus they sized is like Jesus, they weren't confrontational. Right, right. Jesus would put them paws on you if you pulled it. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Rosa right, said in nature. her book that she wouldn't go to bed that night. She said she would sit right next to her grandfather. Guess why she would do that? Because she wanted if they came in there, she wanted to see her grandfather kill them. Mm -hmm. oh, so absolutely. I don't want, even though you're telling the honest to God truth, I just don't want to continue to put oh, that. Oh right, right, yeah, that, no. that, that, that yeah. I don't want to act like yeah, I don't, don't want to act like you're just taking it. Yeah, yeah. They, and they came in deep. I mean, yeah. you were yeah. out, outnumbered, so yeah. I, you could you could yeah. only fight so much. Yeah, you know? uh, I got an a elder in my life. His name is Samuel Jackson. He just moved back down to Mississippi. I was trying to get him on show real bad because Samuel Jackson told me that his father used to shoot white people off their property as a young man. And at some point they caught him slipping and they tarred and feathered him. Mm. Mm. So they did what to him? They tarred and, and feathered him. Oh. Or tar on him and feathered him. Hot tar. Oh. Hot yeah. tar. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't no, it wasn't no, it wasn't no, it wasn't no bomb <laughs> pop. <laughs> right. <laughs> we, got, we got a little less than 20 minutes left and I want to touch on the part that has some association with the history of my family. Uh, so my bonus dad, I don't like calling him stepdad because, you know, okay. the only thing he did was step up, step in and, you know, and do what he needed to do. Right. Step forward. But he was from. So when this Greenwood part came up, Greenwood Tulsa situation, because they touched on that here yeah. Yeah. and talked about how they actually rented planes and was dropping right. basically yeah. Molotov cocktails from the planes or yeah. whatever. Uh, and so I, I thought to him, oh, wait a minute, this tie. Why have I never asked him about Tulsa? Because he grew up in Tulsa. Mm -hmm. So I called him and I said, say, man, I said, hey, I'm checking this documentary out. And I never asked you the impact on Greenwood when you was a kid. You grew up. What's the deal? Have you ever seen those steps to nowhere? Have you been in a neighborhood? He goes, yeah. He goes, he goes, I goes, I said, and I never made the connection. He goes, let me help you further make the connection. He goes, how many times have I told you Greenwood Archer and Pine? Greenwood Archer and Pine. Greenwood that Archer man. and Pine. He goes, we talked in the context of music and it yeah. never made the connection. He goes, that's how the Gap Band was formed, but that Greenwood yes. they're talking about yeah. is the yeah. Greenwood District. And I'm like, yeah, dog. I said, so how far was Mama's at, which is what we call his mama, how far was her house from that area? He goes, about five miles or so. You know, so of course I pulled up the map right away and those mm -hmm. streets, Peoria, Cincinnati, first three, all those streets yeah. that I've been on right, and right, around right. as a kid, had no idea, you know. And so once we got through talking about it, and he was telling me, you know, all the stuff. He's and he says, he goes, and one of the things he goes, I got news for you. He goes, I was pissed off at a young age, you know, like mm -hmm. late teens, you know, which is what yeah. brought him. To Dallas eventually, right? He goes, I was a hothead for a reason. He goes, do you know that they never taught us anything about Greenwood in school at all? They, it wasn't even a mention. Wow. Wasn't even a mention. In Nobody school. went to jail. He says, wow. I didn't have to tell him. He goes, I didn't know anything about that until I was an adult myself and I found out about it, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and so, it, you know, anyway, so I was, we were talking about it and, and so I was like, man, I, I had no idea. You know, yeah. and he goes, yeah, it's yeah. right around the corner yeah. from where we stay, you know. So, again, the whitewashing of history, man, is just oh, it's, yeah. it's sad. But I told him, I said, look, yeah. something I ain't never told you before. I said, and I said, don't don't take any offense to this. I said, but I got, I got, I said, man, I've always felt anytime I was in Tulsa, I felt a heaviness. This was as a kid where I had no way of knowing anything. Oh, yeah. 
Absolutely. But it just felt heavy in that yeah. city, right? Yeah. And he goes, he goes, I got news where he goes, I've always called it depressing. You know, and he goes, it's one of the reasons why I moved to Dallas. You know, he goes, because it was too heavy for me. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, and he goes, and I don't know that I was fully aware right. of what were the causes right. Right. and effects and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. So uh, so anyway, I just thought that was super, super interesting for somebody yeah. to be in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah, and, right. And, and and some of the, you know, like I said, we don't I don't heard him talk about some of the racial things and stuff like that over the years. But again, I'm not making a connection, you know, between yeah, the right. two and how yeah. close in proximity. So, you know, his mom always did relatively well from a financial standpoint. She was in the medical industry and stuff like that. So I'm just thinking to myself that she had to be staying next to some either culprits of the Greenwood or uh, 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 descendants, offspring of the Greenwood people, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and I'm talking about on both sides of it, you Mm -hmm. know, and whatnot. So I just thought that was fascinating, man. And again, literally about an hour before the show, that conversation took place because I'm like, wait a minute, let me see what this take is, man. Just just real quick. The connection is amazing. Yeah. Just real quick, the two things I want to piggyback off of with Doc, you know, when he's saying, you know, those street names have come up and he's been on those streets. In my mind, as Doc is speaking, mm-hmm. how many non-supernatural spirits has Doc passed through without knowing somebody oh, standing wow. there? Wow. Because it's like, I, like, just wow. like with the buildings in the streets, it's like, yeah. I was here. I'm yeah. still here. Like my yeah, supernatural man. self is still here and Doc mm-hmm. is traveling through, yeah. passing through these people. And it's like, yeah. wow, it's mind blowing. Because even even right now at, in downtown Dallas, not right now, but there was a picture and I can't remember the year and they removed this arc. And I think it was called like the Elk uh, Arcway or something. And it was at the intersection. I don't know if it was at the time. I don't know if it was Maine or Commerce or whatever they called it back then. But they literally hanged a man in the middle of downtown Dallas from this archway. But this mysterious archway got removed. It ended up at the fair park. And then from there on, it disappeared from history. So that's like, I had never heard that story until my grandmother had told me. How long ago was that? It had to be, that had to be the late 30s. 1930s. I was like, I think it was the 30s, she told me. Or something like that. I'd have to look it up to give you the proper, yeah. the proper year. So don't quote me on that. But when I when I saw the image of that arcway and that person hanging from that mm-hmm. uh, arcway, it, it had something to do with like a, a obviously it was a wrongful something happened and they yeah. found the guy that looked like the yeah. guy. And, yeah. I mean, they, or just in this brand, documentary, got to look like him. Right. In right. this documentary, they talked about the dude who tripped. He tripped and fell into a white woman, and and she claimed it was something else. And, right. Come on, man. You know. Now, and, and to, to Wilkes's point, that tree, that that. Oh uh, yes, the tree in the middle of the road. The the people that were hung there, and the imagery, and then a tribe we go to you. The imagery that is showing those people standing around, like how disgusting. Yeah, man. You got yeah. your kid, you got a 12, a, a nine, a yeah. four year old. Just standing I like the way he did it too, man, where he yeah, showed like the smiles on their face and stuff yeah, like that. Right. Like like and his man, he showed yeah. what's above, yes. it, you know. That yeah. was yes. smooth. Hey, dog, just to give you, uh, just to show you how ridiculous it is. Uh, I don't know if Ben and uh, uh, Wilkes or you remember him, remember Jerome Bettis's uh, running mate in college, yeah. Reggie oh, Brooks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's from Tulsa, he's been on my show. He didn't find out about Tulsa until he got to know the Dane. Wow. And wow. The affirmation wow. of your, your spiritual experience, I had the same kind of experience uh, uh, 4th of July weekend, 2001. We, mm-hmm. Me, my homeboy Stacy, my homeboy Rodney, we in uh, what, we in East uh, Georgia. It, it, yeah. it, well, he's right outside Atlanta. You know where the chess club is, Ben? The black, all black chess club. It's world famous. It might not have been, you know, you, if, if you thought about it, you're a man. No, he'd be going to the shake joints, man. He don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so we out there. We driving down this one road. And I used to always. I, I have this thing where I'm, I'm, I, I, got I uh, landmark everything in my mind. Yeah. I have this thing about being lost. I don't like being lost. So yeah. wherever I'm at, I'm picking things to remember to go. Yeah. So 
I'm uh, uh, I'm like, I, you know, I, I used to joke and be like, you know, spider sense say this the wrong way because I'm remembering roads and things. We go, we make a wrong turn and we go down this one road. It was a dark road and there's nothing but these like literally like 40 foot high trees. And I'm uncomfortable. And I'm like, hey, yeah. hey, 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 we got yeah, yeah, yeah. Road. yeah. So we come up to this one thing. It's a fork in the road. I say, go down that fork. They, they didn't go, oh, man, come on, man. You don't know where we at. I said, hey, man, I'm not comfortable. We pull up to this Phillips 76 station. It's well lit, like in that uh, uh, Planet of the Apes movie, the recent one. Remember, mm-hmm. I had the Planet of the Apes, the, the mm-hmm. Phillips 76 was well lit. We go in there, man. We jump out of my car. We I was driving a uh, K5 Blaze at the time. I jump out my we jump out my ride, and I look around, and this older white man, he looks at me, he looked at my place. He said, Y'all not from around here. Did you see that fork in the road? I said, yeah. He said, that's where you get back to Atlanta. I said, okay. I jumped back in my ride. My man Rodney walking towards the thing. He said, I'm finna get something to drink. I said, you're never gonna drink it. No. I started up my ride. He ran back in the car. We go back two years later. My cousin Chris, my first cousin, my mother's nephew. Mm. Uh oh, Chris, he come back home and I hire him. I say, we sit in the office. I hire him. We, we, We sit in the office. They don't know he's my cousin. I turned my back on him. He walked in the office. I spent him around. It's me. And we laughing. The interview just remembering the good old days. I told him where I was. He said, man, remember that morning? I said, yeah. He said, remember, I was going to give you my car. You said, no, nah, this is a brand new truck. I should be okay. And I said, yeah. He said, I thank God you ain't taking my truck. He, I said, why? He said, man, where you at is a sundown town. They had already killed three oh. black people in that area. We talking about 2001. Mm-hmm. I believe it. And I, I believe felt, it. I felt it. I, I, that was just. I believe it. Yeah. And, and There's still and, places like that. Yeah. that mm-hmm. And for me, I'm I'm almost. I don't know how y'all feel, but I'm tired of myself saying "wow" because it's not. It's yeah, it's not yeah. Wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not a wow anymore. In this documentary, it was regular. The stuff that he showed but, was. But at, the, but at the same time, we need to keep saying "wow" because if we don't, yeah, it, it may be become time. too. You just so in other words, we may become numb to it, and you yeah. don't want that either. Well, yeah. we, uh, we already it's, are. Man. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, every, I, mean every, I still, yeah, I still say wow, and then of course, but there's always going to be a part of me that's like, oh, well, that's not surprising. But right. the wow factor is always going to be present mm-hmm. yeah. so because it's, it's like, and, and it, it and it can be a wow of many things. It can be a wow that man, we we've been through this, we covered this before, or mm-hmm. man, this is still happening, or this is just this recent, or oh man, forget about it, it just happened. I'm like, no, nah, man, it ain't happened. I don't know, I don't know what you said, CJ, but, but, but uh, Facebook don't forget. <laughs> In jail, man. <laughs> it's like women; they don't forget. They don't. They don't forget. Uh, you be not. arguing about something four years later. <laughs> they be like, hey, uh, uh, Facebook be like, you remember what you said? Right. <laughs> we reviewed that post from 2029. Right. They tried to pop me from 2018 or 19 or something like that. Refute it next time. Yeah. Exactly. But uh man, there's so much. Uh, a couple other names I want to mention. Larry Payne killed at 18 years old. That this was new to me. In, I'd never heard that to this yeah, document. Yeah. This was in uh Tennessee, right? Yes, yeah, his hometown. Yeah, his hometown of Tennessee and yeah. um Memphis, right. And then when he talked about the, uh, you know, MLK was killed on April 4th, but when he talked about his sermon title, I did not know that, but it was, it would have been. They have a transcript on it, but it's not, it's not in speech form, but you can find it to read it. Yeah. Why America may go to hell. Yeah. Wow. If you would have been able to get that speech. Why they may, why, why they may go to hell. There's still a possibility. (laughs) He was it might already be there. He was hammering that home, talking about that tipping point. Uh, we've been at this tipping point over and over and over again. What are we going to do? And this is from this was filmed uh, June 10, 2018. Yeah. So this is that was that was what well, I was before. Uh, yeah. That's why he was able to get those marches in there. Yeah, we definitely, as Dom just said, we definitely at an inflection point, you know. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we, like, like I consistently say, man, we're in a situation to where as we can fix this. We can fix this if we just get up off our behinds, right? The reason I say that is 
over the next 70 days, you get a chance to uh, remove these morons who are uh, uh, white nationalists and, and these evangelical Christians, right? Yeah. And then you got two years to remove them all. People don't understand in this country, they remove civics for a reason. When they remove civics from your classroom, you don't know, you don't realize the power you have. And when you realize the power you have, look, just look at the, 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 the people who are uh, diametrically opposed to your existence. It took them 50 years to get Roe versus Wade overturned. It took them, they they were consistent. They mean, oh, I ain't get what I want. These single, these single issue voters are going to be the end of your ass. I'm mm -hmm. just letting people know. Right. If you only have one issue and that issue doesn't come through, there's nothing in the history of your life in which you said, Mom, can I have the Atari 2600? And you got it that day. Mm, yeah. You might have said it in January, you ain't get it to Christmas. Right. Right. So oh, you, you had to be good all those months. Yeah. Literally, we are literally in an inflection point to where as if we stay consistent for a decade, for, for the remainder of this decade, eight years. You can get the America that you want. Otherwise, you better get you a gun. Mm. Right. A um, cu couple other things. Went back to the Tulsa real quick. Where you talked about the bodies that were dumped and then they built the interstate. The highway over it. Man. Highway yeah. over it. I mean, that's... Right. Bringing them in on train cars. Hmm. Yeah. Train. Yeah. Uh, another fun fact. That's the purpose of Memorial Day. Memorial Day initially was set up by Africans. Right. May 1st, because they were mass graving Africans who helped win that war. Mm -hmm. And when the war ended, Africans came back and said, no, nah, we're going to do yeah. our people. We need to right. be honored. Yeah, we need yeah. to honor our own. And that's how Memorial Day was created. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they moved to the end of the month, took it upon mm -hmm. themselves, and then the rest is history. Yeah. yeah. And the last thing I'll say is at the end, when it talked about racism, which equals <laughs> prejudice, social power, and legal authority. And he said, we don't have the last two. Right. We never had the last two. Never. Yeah. Yeah. So, man, uh, very powerful. If you have not seen this, you must have. watch, must see. It's a must see. Tell must you, see I, I literally paused it and sent it to the group as soon as I was nine minutes in. I was like, oh, man, we got to talk about this one. I, like, that, was a, that was a couple of times I paused it. Like, man, how, much, is, how much time is left? Yeah. Um, yeah. Man, it, it was, I didn't refer it because we had did so many heavy things like this. I was like, it's been a while. Yeah, been a while. I, I ain't want to get I was like, ah, this is this is so H rapping. Yeah, when you do shit like this, you need six months worth of palate cleansing. Yeah. <laughs> right. I was like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was heavy, man. It was heavy. All right, it's still, I mean, oh. even me watching it the second time, it was oh gosh. Yeah, but you almost got to watch it again to because there was so much. Yeah, man, so much to unpack. So many facts. I couldn't yeah. take. I couldn't take notes fast enough. All right, uh, Doc. Final thoughts and your rating. Uh, yeah, man. This is, again, like I said, it's a it's a must see, must see, must watch. If you hadn't checked it out, I, I would check it out. Refer everybody you know to check it out. You know, it's just information we have to have. It, it, you know, again, there's people out there talking about being woke and the, the woke they're talking about is still half sleep. I mean, right. Put it like that. Exactly. So, you know, that's the kind of woke you want to be. And one of the most powerful things this dude said in this documentary was there's a difference between the law and living when you're black in America. Right. And that resonates with me. I don't care what the law say. Yeah, I know the law say this. Right. But we got to live, you know, right. uh, and there's a difference between the law and living. Right. When you black in America. Uh, my ratings, I, I was torn between four and a half and five. But I think, again, because of how well he did, I'm going to go ahead and get his five mics, man, really. You know, I think he did a fantastic job. He was unassuming. Think about some of the documentaries where we were like, the, the guy who was doing all the talking, he's like, man, he kind of got on my nerves the first little bit and <laughs> stuff like that. I didn't get yeah. none of that from this cat. Yeah. I thought even his audience was well received. It was different in how he did it. He yeah. did it where he was flipping back and forth to being on the scene and teaching an audience and whatnot. Yeah. So I, th I think it was fantastic. So I have to give it five mics. It, it almost made me feel like your grandfather talking to you. 
Yeah, there you go. Sit down. That's right. how it's there you go, man. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's yeah. what yeah. All right. Hey, Trip. Uh, I'm, I'm going to start off with the rating. I'm giving it a five. And then I'll tell you my final thoughts. My final thoughts is this was excellently done. And one, one of the things that really benefited him is this. He's an attorney. He's used to presenting something that's palatable to, palatable to a there group. There you go. That's a good so point. When, you, a good when point. you have the ability to address somebody in this fashion, it comes off unassuming because he can't offend the jury in his that's legal profession. Point. So right. he was able to disseminate a message in a palatable way. And when he did that, it was easier to go down. So that's why I gave it a five, easy. Yeah. And he, I think he said that at the beginning, this is the hardest case I have to defend or something to that degree, I think. Yeah, he said, he said something like that, yeah. yeah. So he, was, he was right. All right, Wilkes. Um, yeah, I was actually in between, like actually driving home uh, from the doctor's appointment. I was like, man, is it a four and a half mic? Is it five? I mean, even though I called it, and I'm like, man, this is either going to rival uh, Exterminate the Brutes yeah. or it's going to may- maybe trump it. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Uh, I could be wrong, but. Yeah, they're uh, neck and neck. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, five I would go with Trump. Me. Um, what was that, h Trump? I would go with Trump. Now be careful because I can mark that and use that against you, what you just said. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go with Trump. I'm going to go with Trump. I'm going to go with Trump. I can prove to you that it's these deep fakes out there. I can prove to you a trapper has been lying to you. I got it on video. Hey. Who he's going with. My, my, hey, you, might be able to get, you might be able to convince them outside people, but my audience, they have to like. <laughs> Uh, a lot of people call this because I'm racist. So, oh, <laughs> look at baby yeah. H rap back there peeking over being shoulders right there. Y'all see it? Look at being. I didn't peep that. Mini H rap. I guess. Right. So, uh, yeah, five mics. And even, uh, I mean, we didn't even get to the. Uh, Slave Patrol badge. We didn't even get to all that, but yeah, man, um, it's e- so even, much stuff. Yeah, even at the end where he thanked his parents, for saying that you know you still gave us a chance, even when reality right. was peaking or bearing its ugly head, you still made sure that we got what we needed to succeed mm-hmm. in this life. But yet, you still shared and gave reality. You know, like hey, this is reality. But you can make this your reality. Right. You know they can exist together. You yeah. know, so yeah, no, it was it, it was big. I enjoyed it. I have five mics definitely. Even though I was kind of back and forth, but I I have to say five mics. And think so, about the scene with his two childhood friends that were white. Oh, they talked yeah. about that basketball yeah. tournament. Didn't even talk about that. Yeah. yeah, you want to talk oh. about a struggle? Get, do you see how that white man chin was trembling that whole time? Oh, that's she serious. Was, my chin was trembling. Hey, a white yeah. Hey, yeah, that was serious right there. Yeah, like, that was, was tough, man. Uh, yeah, that was. I, I yeah. When I first saw and that, think scene, about it, man. Think of how cool that dude was to try to go do it to where he wouldn't have to hurt because he knew his partner yeah. would hurt. Yeah, he, he was like, "No, we got to go." Safe. He said, "Oh, so he said, no, nah, some wrong with the scoreboard. We got to yeah, go. Yeah, you yeah. know, whatever, man." Yeah. That, that was, that was just coach. cool, man. That was his coach. Yeah, that was that was back in 1970. I think it was 70 or 71, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. And you got a teenage white kid right. that's looking out for a black kid like that, man. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I mean, yeah, that's whew, crazy, man. So it's 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 a five across the board. I'm giving five too. And and when when Wilkes was saying, "Hey, this is this is this could rival or or be better than Exterminate the Brutes," I was like, "Ah, right, hold on now." But when I watched it, man, it was it was facts on top of facts on top of facts. Within interviewing people to back up the story, Alfred. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alfred, thank and you. Also, I don't know if I said this name. Um, you well, got this actually a cat woman bringing my shit. I ain't no Alfred. <laughs> thank you, Selena. Uh, Elmore Bowling. <laughs> Elmore Bowling was, was, was killed in Alabama. Look that up as well, man. This, this documentary dived into so many different, yeah. so many different people and their families and their stories. So uh, it, it was well done, and it was it was broken down to where. You got it all in a short, a short amount of yeah. time. Yeah, it was. 
And I never, I never, I never seen any, I never heard of this guy before. So if he's if he's working on any future projects, I'm definitely gonna be. He in. may be. I mean, in high demand after this one. Yeah, I think oh, it's yeah. a website. Uh, who we are project, I think, dot com or dot org. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I hope he's working on something else. I mean, yes. and they, like H Rap said, it, and I, I say, I, I always say, man, I, he, he doesn't sound familiar, he doesn't look familiar, but then when he says Joe Madison and Karen Hunter, yeah. I was like, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I, I know, I know you heard him. Yeah, 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 I know you heard him. All right, so next week is Labor Day, so there will not be an episode of the forecast. So we ain't going to work on Labor Day. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> The week after, though, we will be reviewing Nope, the new... Uh, Is that already on streaming service? Yeah. Okay. yeah I, watched it. I watched it yesterday. Oh, actually. Okay. Where is it at? Like $25, right? But I won't be here to review it, unfortunately. I got you. Right. Where'd you, where'd you, go, where'd you $25. Go to watch? Huh? Where'd you go to watch it? $25. Yeah, it's high. I, I bet you know. Hey man, I'm poor. Um, like, where did I go? go I five. think it's Amazon Prime. Yeah, Amazon Prime. Me, me and Wilkes can do a watch party. Sorry, H. Rap. Wow, yeah, yeah, Twelve dollars and fifty cents each. <laughs> Sorry, H. Rap. Let me watch. <laughs> Twenty five dollars, <Yeah>. man. <laughs> you um, can't call nobody. Write it off. <laughs> write it off. It's a business expense, homeboy. Yeah, day trading. I'm cheating. <laughs> This fool said, well, hopefully, by that time, maybe they lower the price. We got them about, yeah, yeah, about two. Over. So, that, that's what's coming up. Uh, so what's coming up tomorrow on the end of the bench? On the end of the bench, I have a special guest, a former classmate of mine. His name is Sean Walker. He was a committee man in, in, in city government, and uh, he, he was always uh, a, uh, a person who stayed above the fray. He's a former baseball player, like I was, and, and he played basketball as well. But Sean was always a different, different breed of cat. And he's gonna help. Me. He's gonna come on, and he's gonna talk about his latest attempt to be a state senator. And now he's uh, getting things together for uh, voter registration and things of that nature. Because just because he didn't make uh, the ability, he didn't, he didn't have the ability to get in the city government. His, he's not gonna relinquish his uh, uh, attempt to uh, make things better. And then I'm gonna talk about. It's going, to, it's, it's going to be kind of like a, I'm, I'm going to throw a little sports in because I'm re, revamping my sports thing. I'm going to do a highlight on uh, Jesse Jesse Owen and I'm going to do uh, um, what's his name? Johnson, Jack Johnson. Those are going to be the videos. And then I'm going to talk about mentality. Mentality and way we think. Uh, we For years, we've uh, made this statement a jack of all trade, a master of none. But that's that's a lie, and that's just somebody else is thinking. And then we uh we've created this fictitious way of thinking, and that is uh if you look at it half full, you're going to be negative, and if you look at it half empty, uh, you're going to you know. But that's not true because some people, everybody is triggered in different ways. When you look at a glass as half empty, that could be your cue to jump up and get to working. If you look at it half full, you, that could be your cue to relax and say, hey, I still got a quarter to go. So we must gain control of the way we see and think and, and you know, the way we see things and the way we think in order to move forward as a community. And then the second thing I'm going to address is imagery. Um, we have been bombarded with a specific form of imagery for the last 40 years. And I'm going to address that and hopefully addressing that can spark people to have these conversations and reduce some of the violence because I'm going to give a different perspective right. definitely definitely so no queen three and king tomorrow uh, as well as no marriage is real because it is the third annual bsu network awards so make sure to tune in on our youtube channel let me get that graphic up right there so the third annual we have a variety of different awards and uh whoops, let me do that a variety of different awards um supporter of the year podcast of the year um, uh, funniest podcast award, best intro. So we got a variety of different war awards that we'll be giving out tomorrow. So make sure to tune in 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And uh, that's what we have going on tomorrow night. So uh, as we always do, we can kick it to A-Trap to close this out. I was going to look up his name. The Oscar is actually a black man. Mm. Really? That, that's, that's who's sculpted after? No, no, it was named after a black man. Oh, uh, 
Oscar is a black man. I, I, could, I was going to look it up, but I couldn't think of his name. Um, as usual, man, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, as I say every week, you need to just dream, you know, salute the Reggie O'Shea by saying dream your dreams and man up and woman up and live your dreams because life without dreams flows in black and white and life with dreams flows, technical, flows in technicolor and surround sound. And y'all already know, man, we're in the middle of a recession. So if I owe you something, I ain't got it. Mm-hmm. And if you need it, get it from God. Peace. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Have a good night. See you at six. BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV.